What is a seemingly harmless parenting mistake that will majorly fuck up a child later in life? Story 21 Never showing up for events. I remember my parents didn't come to most of my chorus concerts. It really sucked to see my classmates' families cheer them on while my parents were absent. I brought home one of my chorus program papers to show my parents and I found it in the trash the next day. I was sad because I wanted to keep it, but seeing it in the trash, I didn't want it anymore. Edit. I love my parents and I don't blame them for not showing up. They are small business owners and it was hard for them to find people who could work for them whenever I had concerts or anything. It still hurt though. Also, the replies to this are very sad. I'm sorry that a lot of you guys went through similar experiences. Second edit. Also, my mom is a clean freak. She'll discard or move any stray papers laying around. She probably didn't think much of it. She might not have even realized what it was. She can't read English that well. It's her third language. After I told her, she apologized to me, so it's okay. I thought I should add that my little sister and grandma would come to them. But my relationship with my grandma isn't great. It's just not the same as having your parents there, if that makes sense. Story 20. This is serious. I carry deep regrets over this. My kids were really wounded by my failing to properly memorialize the deaths of their sisters. We had two normal kids. Then my wife was pregnant and gave birth to two babies as a very late term miscarriage. I held them and they were small babies. Charity's birthday is in two days. Hannah was born October 10th. We thought we did all the right things. We took their cremains and with our children, put one into the sea and another into a friend's lake. We talked about the loss occasionally, but we didn't do a lot of things we could have done. Memorialize their birthdays, Christmas ornaments for them, that sort of tangible stuff that kids can grasp. As it turns out, both of them grieved those losses deeply. They were four and five and we thought they barely understood it. But we were wrong and it really wounded them and they exploded with anger and hurt at us a couple of years ago. We handled it well, we got counseling, we apologized, we started correcting course. Right now, neither of them really speak to us. They cannot seem to forgive us for that oversight of not properly memorializing their sisters. And it's tearing us apart. We were so close. And now they are so distant and act so incredibly injured over this. And I'm a profession in an associated area. And so is my wife. We can't even grasp the depths of this loss from a professional, let alone personal perspective. So include your kids in on these sorts of hurts and losses. That's my deepest regret as a parent. Story 19. Anyone who is a parent or ever hopes to be a parent, please never tell your child. I would be so sad if you turned out to be gay slash lesbian slash trans. I just came out to my family this year. I'm 21. And my mom cried about how she didn't feel like a good mother because I didn't tell her sooner and told other people. She doesn't even remember that she said that. I, on the other hand, will never forget it. I know this isn't what anyone in the family wanted. Edit. Not to throw my mom entirely under the bus because although it was a difficult coming out, she does love and accept me. However, this one single comment, she said this when I was 13 or 14, majorly fueled my fear of coming out to my parents. I thought it would make me a huge disappointment and embarrassment. Please like and subscribe if you made it this far. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Wow, wow, wow. Story 18. In my experience, the inability to keep a conversation light and positive. For example, if I received an A on a test and I brought it up at the dinner table, within five minutes, we would be having a tense discussion about some other class I should be doing better in, or it has turned negative on one of my siblings. Why the HEC would I bother bringing something up if it's going to remind you of something you yell about regularly? In the same vein, the inability to withhold more important discussions for another time. My parents never considered planning a sit down with me for a serious discussion about something I'm doing wrong or did wrong. Rather, they'd spring it on me when I'm trapped in a car with them or at the dinner table or when I'm least expecting it or simply need to be doing something else. Important discussions were simply interjected into everyday life and it led to me having bad anxiety and the inability to just relax around my parents. This may actually be part of some larger complex I have about my parents not having healthy divisions between themselves and other individuals. Like 
they don't respect or acknowledge that their kids are fully separate people who think in different ways. If I was living in a way that disappointed my parents throughout my adult life, they would die young and allow it to take decaduses of their lives because they are so intertwined in other people's business. They would never think their adult children deserve the respect of like a coffee date or lunch in order to discuss a big issue. It would just be spewed out at the wrong time. They have no emotional intelligence and are the most judgmental people I've ever met. Story 17. Pretty much telling you that whatever activity that you enjoy doing is annoying or dumb. I used to love to sing. I was in chorus and would play my favorite songs over and over to learn the words. Not only did my sisters tease me for it, but my parents told me to shut up constantly. So I stopped singing. I must have been terrible, right? I sing when I'm alone or jokingly with some friends. What really broke me was when I went to visit everyone for the holidays and my sister said that she was surprised I never pursued singing since I seemed to love it so much when I was younger. I nearly started crying and had to bite my tongue so I wouldn't scream at her for being one of the reasons I stopped. It's always funny for the ones doing the teasing, but it actually hurts the ones being teased, especially when it's coming from people who are supposed to love you. Story 15, saying, I don't care who started it. I grew up with friends whose siblings would target the one with the bad temper, provoke them into a rage, then cry and play victim when they got slapped. In this case, it does matter who started it. A parent has to make it clear that violence isn't okay, but neither is provoking someone into said violence. It doesn't matter that said person never hit or kicked while their sibling did. They never would have gotten hurt in the first place if they didn't encourage the aggression to begin with. Children are clever and will find loopholes in their parents' rules. Parents need to be better and snuff out that kind of BS when it starts. If they don't, they'll raise a manipulator and a scapegoat. One will use them and one will resent them. It's a lose-lose all because of a simple rule. Story 14, treating crying as if it's something only weak people do. My dad in particular used to yell at me for crying, which only made me cry more which made him yell more, and you get the point. In high school, I tried to bring up the possibility of me having anxiety problems that I'd spoken to the school counselor about because my friends made me go since they were worried. He told me I was just a drama queen. I can't express that I'm anxious or stressed around my dad because others have it worse. Even now I'm 21 and seeing a psychiatrist in a couple weeks because I've just felt so bad lately and I would never let my dad know. I think I'd rather die than my dad know I've been seeing a psychiatrist and discussing the possibility of me having OCD with said psychiatrist, which does explain a lot and is actually kind of comforting for me to know because he'd get so mad at me for being weak. Story 13, trying to teach them a lesson, but actually just cruelly punishing or criticizing them with the veil of doing the child a kindness. My parents call me a bitch as well as other expletives and criticize my every behavior after each outing or social gathering. It's resulted in a deeply ingrained self-hatred complex and I have no plans to continue contact with them after I'm no longer financially dependent on them. My parents would also yell at me and my siblings in front of company to make sure everyone knew how awful we were. They go from trying to be our best friends one minute to spending hours yelling or lecturing us for minute mistakes. When the only two people in your life who are supposed to love you unconditionally are the ones who make you feel the worst about yourself. It destroys the way you believe you deserve to be treated. I was in an emotionally abusive relationship for months because I was used to being treated like that from my parents and I genuinely thought it was okay. It took direct intervention from my best friends to wake me up and see the truth. Nobody deserves to have their parents verbally abuse them under the semblance of helping them because it helps nobody and only damages those receiving it. Story 12. The saddest part of this question is that my mom had done so many things that everyone is saying is bad. Not hugging, praising, telling me to suck it up, etc. So let me give one that I feel would have helped me out growing up. Do not be afraid to admit when you are wrong or when you make mistakes to your child. My parents would go out of their way to justify any mistake they made and make it seem as if they were right, no matter what the situation was. It gave me a pretty messed up view of right and wrong, as well as learning from mistakes, but was fixed by my grandma. It's a long story that I don't want to get into right now. Edit, wow, 
11k in silver on my first ever comment and it pertains to my shitty childhood tie. But on a serious note, I want to reiterate the importance of not only advice, but the consequences of not taking said advice. X, my parents never congratulated me on good grades, doing the right thing, etc. They would only say, that's what you're supposed to do, or you better keep it up and threaten me if I didn't live up to their expectations. So now, as an adult, I'm insanely suspicious and at the same time, worried of people complimenting me or congratulating me for anything I do. Story 11. Creating an environment where you tell your kid their feelings aren't valid just because they aren't the same as yours, or your kid processes their emotions differently than you. Angrily telling your kid they are too sensitive slash dramatic slash theatrical slash hormonal slash etc. is just going to mess your kid up and encourage them to bottle emotions up to avoid upsetting you and is going to lead to major communication issues. Also, constantly pushing an intelligent or self-motivated child to work harder and harder and do better. You're setting your kid up to be a perfectionist, which can be incredibly damaging to his or her mental health in the long run. Story 10. Giving in to your kids' wants and desires without upholding discipline and consequences will give your kids a large uphill battle to climb later. I say this BC, my parents babied me a lot when I was young. I never had to do anything I didn't want to do. Yix. When I started getting bad grades BC, I wasn't doing my homework, my parents would have conferences with my teachers so they could give me extra credit. I had a rude awakening in college when I realized how hard life is. I 100% love and adore my parents. And who's to say, if they did discipline me more that I'd have turned out any different? Probably not, but you never know. But when I have kids, I, I already know a few things I do differently. Story 9. Downplaying things that are bothering your kids. It's something my parents did out of love and trying to help. If I was upset by something, I'd tell them, I'm having trouble with underscore underscore underscore. And they'd try to lighten it by saying, there is no reason to struggle with underscore underscore underscore. It's all fine and totally easy to handle if you just do X, Y, Z. It was the response to everything, whether I was sad about fights with friends, or worried about the future, or frustrated having trouble in school, was much later diagnosed ADHD LOL. They just wanted me to feel better and be encouraged, but I've realized later it gave me the impression that by having negative feelings in the first place, I was somehow at fault for not looking at it the right way caused me to bottle things up by trying to just positive attitude it all away, and it made me a little crazy for a while till I learned to accept and not feel guilty for normal negative feelings. I wish instead they could have had the moment of understanding first and said, it makes sense that you're feeling badly about this, it's a hard situation. Then gone on to offering solutions and encouragement. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Being overly rigid about table manners to the point of physically correcting how your 19-year-old child is holding a fork over the age of about 12. Timing your children's meals and taking their plates away if they go over time. Mocking them for not knowing how to eat unfamiliar foods correctly. I get an eating disorder. My brother gets an eating disorder. Everyone gets an eating disorder. Spending more time dwelling on how evil and wrong premarital sex, dating, and the gays are than you do on you are my child and I love you. Good way to make sure your son is fucking his girlfriend, who fortunately knows more about safe sex than he does because you never bothered to teach him. One of daughters has a girlfriend, the other is dating someone older than you are, and they all plan to get married sometime in the next five years without inviting or informing you using anything they tell you confidentially against them. Want your kids to never trust your or anyone with personal information? Way to go. Making a really big deal out of them displaying behavior you want. Oh wow, look everyone, Nina finally came out of her room. Wow Nina, I bet that was really hard for you. By 16, Nina comes home only to sleep. Story 7. Getting them involved in problems they have no control over. My parents felt the need to keep me in the loop regarding our pending foreclosure and argue in front of me over which one was to blame when I was 10. What possible reason is there to share that with a kid? I barely slept for months. 
I was convinced the cops were gonna bust in at midnight and throw us all outside. Story six, mocking them, laughing at them. Adults do it to each other all the time, but kids who haven't been immersed in the background, cruelty of our culture for years, don't understand that it's just the language of the land and not that they themselves are particularly unworthy of respect. I got laughed at and mocked a few times as a kid and that shit hurts a lot. There was one time I was trying to help a friend at their birthday by taking their presents to them, but all the adults and my parents thought I was being selfish and wanted them for myself and joked and laughed at me and just ignored me explaining myself and carried on. I think that hurt my self-esteem a lot in the long run. Story five. My dad challenged me to a drinking contest in front of his friends when I was 16. I'm a tiny petite girl, and because I always wanted to impress him, make him proud, I agreed. He made me drink shagger bombs until I threw up and took a photo of my face in the bowl and texted it to all of his mates. They were also my work colleagues at the time. Oh, and the first time he ever introduced me to alcohol at 14 years of age, he made me do shots of Sambuca shot for shot with him for some quality time with dad. Mum had to take me to the bathroom to be sick and put me to bed. Story four, don't smother your kids. My mom quit having her own life the moment my brother and I were born. She was an incredibly devoted and loving mother was very kind to us. But when we were born, she stopped having friends, did not work, and was home every single day from when I was born to when I moved out in my early 20s. She was very easy to upset because she had no other source of self-esteem. And anytime I screwed up, and I screwed up a lot, it was as if I had levied a very personal attack against her. In the last five years or so before I left, I don't think we had a single conversation that didn't drive her to tears. And I promise I wasn't that bad. I constantly felt cornered and stressed and fell into depression as a defense mechanism. And she took my resulting lack of performance very personally, creating a very treacherous cycle that was only broken when I enlisted and finally got away. To this day, I often feel like I'm a bad person who failed to live up to her love. Story three, in a different vein of thought, making finances a taboo subject. Financial illiteracy can be devastating once entering adulthood. Want to keep your children from making your own money mistakes? Don't be too proud to teach them what those mistakes were. Edit. Oh, MG, I've never been gifted gold. Thank you, stranger. And to clarify, I don't mean robbing your children of their innocence by putting the weight of your debt on them at an early age, but rather teaching them how to properly budget their money as they earn it, how to build savings, what credit is, and how to responsibly manage it, credit utilization, the danger of revolving balances, not using credit as an emergency fund. Teach them about predatory interest rates and the true cost of a loan. Set realistic expectations for costs of living, etc. Story two, not following through with your promises. If you told your child you were buying ice cream tomorrow in the hopes that they'd forget, and the next day when they ask, you tell them no, they'll see you as unreliable. Ice cream is just the first thing that came to my mind. I'm sure someone else can explain better what I'm trying to say here without sounding so ridiculous. I taught my children at very young ages that outside of extreme circumstances, failing to keep a promise made is the same as telling a lie. Therefore, I won't make promises to them that I am not absolutely certain I can keep. They learned early in life that I take my promises very seriously and will go to great lengths to honor them. We have hit very hard times recently, and I have had to delay delivery on some promises which breaks my heart. But they know that I will fulfill those promises eventually, and are much more empathetic and understanding than their peers have been in similar situations. Story 1. Never saying sorry to your kids. My mom only just recently started telling me sorry when she gets worked up. It's built up such a resentment for her over the years. And I also have trouble saying sorry myself because of it. Tell your kids sorry, especially if you overreact to something they did. I'm sort of glad that my mom isn't the only one who acts like this. She's actually working on that issue since me and my siblings are older now and can call her out on it without many consequences. It just sucks because she only started working on it once I left for college. I wish she had told me sorry once when I younger. Yeah, thanks for watching. And make sure to click the subscription button for more, more and more Franken stories. Hope see you soon. Bye bye, Weston. Wow, bye.